Hey, what's up guys? Soli Dubbed here, and today I am reviewing this massive, ultra-wide, or shall I say super ultra-wide, Samsung monitor. Now this is the C49J890DKU. Now for, for short, it's Samsung CJ89. Now this is a massive 49-inch monitor. Now you can probably see from the size of the, how it looks on a desk and just to give you an idea, this is the IKEA Freddy desk so you, can, you guys can google it in terms of its dimension. It's a huge, huge monitor. And this monitor can be found for around £850 on Amazon.co.uk. Link will be down in the description below. Can't find it in the US at the moment but I'm sure it'll be available at some point. And again, I'll be sure to upgrade, update that the description. Now the monitor specs um, for uh, for those wondering. So first of all, it's a curved monitor. It's a, a 1800R curved monitor, 49 inch or 48.9 inch to be precise, with an aspect ratio of 32 to 9. It has a VA panel. It has a quoted response time of 4 milliseconds. It has a refresh rate of 144 hertz. It has display port, HDMI, and USB-C uh, inputs. It also has a KVM switch, which I'll show you in that in just a second. And also, on top of that, it's also got some built-in speakers. So there's a lot of features, and given the size and the, the type of monitor it is, I would say it's quite a unique monitor. There's not many that compete with it. I'll list down in the description below some of its um, closest competitors, but in my time of reviewing monitors, I've not come across something this big or to offer certain features that it does. Now, let's get into the build quality. Now, first of all, the build quality and design. Now, the monitor is absolutely massive, but even though it takes a lot of space on the desk, I found its um, ultra slim bezels a fantastic addition. It means that the monitor doesn't seem like it takes too much space. And if for some reason you want to stack two of these on top of each other, then the bezels won't be too uh, thick in order to, um, to uh, take away from the viewing experience. The stand is the pretty much the newer stand that Samsung adopted, which is quite nice. It's all plastic design, but it holds up the monitor fantastically well. It's got a um, triangular shape, and the monitor has got a full array of adjustments, which is great to see, um, and it means that you can adjust it to show your colleagues or whatnot. I've got no complaints about it, and of course you can't rotate it given the size of the monitor. As I said before, the inputs of the monitor, there's two, um, a, th a few other uh, inputs I should mention. There's a USB, um, there's two USB uh, type C uh, ports which uh, can be used to charge your device and there's different wattages as well, which means you can um, quick charge your, um, your device. And then you've got uh, one USB 3.0 port and two USB 2.0 ports. Now in terms of the monitor's um, the OSD, now the monitor's OSD is pretty comprehensive and I'm just going to bring you guys uh, closer to the monitor for you guys to see this. But the monitor's OSD can be accessed through uh, the buttons underneath over here. Now there's an on and off button over here and then there's uh, three dedicated buttons over here uh, dedicated for the KVM switch. Now the button here is used to switch on and off the monitor but also to access the, the, the OSD through a useful little joystick control. Now it, within the settings you've got pretty much everything you that you'd want in order to um, adjust the monitor. There's nothing really missing over here apart from the response time. So unfortunately this doesn't have the MPRT that the um, smaller uh, gaming centric um, monitors have from Samsung but instead it is a um, it's one that uh, just has a picture quality and say display quality uh, tests. Now you've got the PIP and uh, PBP as well uh, that you can set up which you can uh, enable on and off and I'll show you that in just a bit. And also quite an interestingly um, what I found is that you've also got a, a calibration mode. Now the calibration report is uh, usually found in most Samsung monitors but in this case because Samsung told me that um, most people lost the paper, then in here you've got a nice uh, calibration report which is built into the on-screen display. Something I've never seen before but it's actually really cool to have. In terms of my settings you can see I've got the brightness as 100 right now, contrast 75 and the color is 50 50 50. Now let's talk about the color, um, the color reproduction based on those settings. Now I haven't used a calibrator of any sorts, uh, but as you saw, um, the monitor is pre-calibrated um, from the factory. And I must say, Samsung have done a fantastic job. The, the colors and the contrast ratio are 
both very, very good. So for example, in this image, you've got very dark blacks over here, whilst you've got a nice white point uh, on, on the earth and then some nice um, colors uh, on the, the horizon. Moving on, we've got this uh, image of London, which is vibrant of color, plenty of color that's popping at you, and no sorts of issues in terms of contrast ratio or the color reproduction. And yet again, scrolling through various images that uh, I have on my PC, I felt that the monitor's um, capability of reproducing accurate colors, at least to my perceive perceivable eyes, um, and uh, in terms of its contrast ratio, will uh, satisfy everyone's needs. And that includes uh, people who are photo editors and video editors. I feel that this monitor will be absolutely perfect for that. Basing the color calibration based on uh, older panels of Samsung, the Samsung VA panels, I must say, uh, they are pretty much accustomed uh, to that type of market. So I wouldn't be uh, surprised that this uh, monitor will be uh, made for you guys uh, too. Now, moving on from the uh, picture quality, I want to mention the uh, pit mode and um, the uh, KVM switch. Now the KVM switch, for those who don't know, including myself before I actually got this monitor, is a way of using your mouse and keyboard um, with, um, with the monitor, but therefore only using uh, one input. In other words, usually if you've got two devices, so for example here I've got my laptop on my right hand side and I've got the monitor on the left hand side, normally what would happen is that you would need um, two mice and keyboards to control both. This does still mean that you need two cables to connect up, one from the monitor to my actual desktop PC and one um, cable to connect up to the to laptop. Now you might be seeing there's a cable missing and that is the case because unfortunately I couldn't find a cable that would carry across um, carry across my um, uh, my my signal for the um, for the mouse and therefore I was unable to get that running on the laptop. That could be due to the laptop or could be due to the cables. That said, when I did unplug the cable that Samsung provides with the monitor and put it into my laptop, it worked flawlessly. So it's not a certain problem with uh, the monitor, it's more a problem with uh, my setup or the cables that I'm using. Now, as you can see right now, I've got two full HD 1080p displays running side by side with two separate different inputs. It works fantastically, especially in terms of uh, for anyone who wants uh, various different um, tasks on different machines, you can simply plug and play and see two different displays. Given the size of the monitor, you can see that it is absolutely massive and therefore it's the equivalent of two 27 inch curved monitors sitting side by side next to each other without any sort of bezel. A great sort of implementation, especially for people who are into productivity. But let's take away the laptop and let's go back to the, um, let's go back to the main screen and talk about, um, uh, talk about the gaming performance um, of the monitor. Now this monitor isn't directly aimed at gamers and when I say that, uh, Samsung actually have this monitor in a HDR uh, variant of it with gaming and MPRT uh, as well, uh, therefore being perfect for that ultra responsive, um, ultra responsive gaming. This, on the other hand, doesn't have HDR, it doesn't have the, that sort of uh, technology in order to reduce the response time of the monitor. But on the plus side, what I can see about the monitor is the fact that this monitor is not really aimed at those um, who are going to be competitively gaming or needing, um, uh, needing a uh, ultra responsive monitor. Instead, I can see this monitor being aimed at more casual gamers for those who want an ultra wide experience. So let's say if you're going to be um, playing a racing game or if you're going to be one who is... Um, who's going to be, um, I don't know, enjoying some scenes in Fortnite or, or Battlefield, then this monitor will be absolutely perfect. As you can see, Counter-Strike looks utterly, utterly stupid, and that's because um, the monitor, uh, sorry, the, the game doesn't support a super wide or super ultra wide uh, resolution. Therefore, my 4x3 stretch resolution looks utterly hideous and ridiculous. But the reason I'm using Counter-Strike over here was really to test its uh, response time and its input lag. And I felt that the input lag was relatively good. It's relatively low, um, uh, perceivably low. Of course, the, for the size of the monitor, it's acceptable. But then if you take it to a 24-inch TN, um, 144 hertz um, gaming display, then it doesn't compete with those type of monitors. And the input lag will be uh, more perceivable on this type of monitor. In terms of response time, yet again, the monitor doesn't respond as like a, um, a premium gaming monitor would do. However, 
when it comes to more casual games, it's absolutely acceptable. Especially for the fact that you've got very uh, little perceivable ghosting that occurs. So over here is normally what tests I do when I look for lines to kind of like uh, inverse ghosting to show on this uh, on this wall. And over here, there's absolutely none to be seen, and yet um, the uh, experience is relatively good. Now, do I see myself playing a game like Counter Strike on it? Absolutely not. But do I see myself playing a game like Fortnite or the Dota or uh, let's say Shadow Warrior 2? Absolutely. In terms of the overall gaming experience on this type of monitor, I must say I was a little bit more immersed than I normally am um, on my normal 27 inch non curved monitor and even versus other monitors that I've reviewed, which are ultra wide monitors. And yes, they do provide a little bit of extra immersion, but nothing, something, nothing like what I've just experienced with this monitor. It's so wide, it means it completely immerses you in terms of gaming. Now, as I said, it's not directly aimed at gamers, but it can be used for gaming. So who is it really aimed for? Well, in my opinion, and as Samsung pretty much market it, it's for those people who are looking at it for a business solution. It's one that has, uh, for, for those who are using it for um, financial institutions or whatnot, or those who are using it in order to multitask it with various tabs. And Samsung also provide a software which allows you to, to customize where these tabs go when you're snapping them on Windows. It means that it, you can have multiple tabs running all at once on one screen without having a bezel there. The only problem is, well, there's two things. One is this price. It's quite expensive. £850 is not a cheap monitor. That said, its competitors come in around £750 and don't offer such a wide uh, display. So for business users, that this would make much more sense. The next thing I would say, however, is its resolution. Now, of course, it's got the massive 38 four uh, zero um, uh, pixels but it's times 1080 so it's running at a full HD 1080p display now in my opinion I would have liked to see a 1440p display especially at this price it's to be expected because given its price tag if it was a 1440p monitor you'd be looking at over 1200 pounds uh, or, or more is this a big problem well in my opinion having uh, owned and having used a 1440p monitor on a daily basis, I can't see myself going back to 1080p. And therefore, the pixels don't look really crystal clear, and given the size of the monitor and, and, and how wide it is, you're going to notice a little bit of pixelation every now and then. That's my only concern with the monitor, is its resolution and is its price. Other than that, guys, I think it's a fantastic monitor. It offers everything that you would want, essentially from a, um, a business uh, side of view and even in terms of, of a casual gaming or even photo editing or video rendering um, point of view but again it's not something I can see myself personally buying because of the use case. I should also mention before I, I leave a couple of other things that I just wanted to quickly mention. There's a curvature on the left and right hand side of the monitor. Uh, outer edges you do see a slight tail off and it's something I did notice on um, other ultra wide uh, monitors. And it's a shame to see it back over here on this Samsung monitor. It's a very small tail off and only affects you if you're looking at the monitor from very extreme angles. Um, but nevertheless it's something I should point out. And also I'd like to point out its speakers. Now its speakers are actually surprisingly good. If I just play some music here um, from um, NCS, so here we go. Now you'll be able to listen to this song yourself on your own system, but uh, in my um, in my quick uh, little demo there, you're able to hear a nice sort of like uh, but, uh, a, a punchy bass line and actually relatively good mids and highs, which is somewhat surprising for a monitor. And of course, it's not something I would see myself using myself because I've got a headset, a headphone um, and some speakers but I can see it being used in a business sort of environment and actually playing back audio or some videos, for example, for like um, um, color grading or whatnot, and you just need to listen to some audio to sync some audio. This actually has some surprisingly good um, a set of speakers, which I could see myself actually using if I needed to, if I didn't have all my um, other peripherals. And finally, the last thing I want to uh, point out before I end the video is the heat of the monitor. Now, I'm not talking about how much fire it brings to the game, I'm talking about how hot it is physically. Weirdly enough, at the top side of the monitor, it's not very hot, but on the edges of the monitor, and I understand it's an edge-lit um, uh, monitor, the monitor is actually very hot. Uh, very hot. Now, the only reason this should bother you is because if you're going to be uh, moving the monitor left and right, you're going to be moving it from its uh, outer edges rather than the center. 
and therefore you might find it a little bit surprising to find a very hot monitor uh, that you're touching. So it's just something I should mention, just something I, met, uh, I noticed when I got it out of the box and plugged it in. So there we go guys, I've been totally dubbed. This has been a super honest and as, as detailed review as I could have done. I'm sorry it's a bit long, but I thought to cover off everything that I needed to. And there we go. If you've enjoyed this review, make sure you give it a like, comment, subscribe, be it on my shorts or what I'm wearing to the actual monitor. It'd be lovely to hear your opinions. And uh, more than anything, if you can uh, subscribe and favorite and share, it'll always help the channel grow. All right, guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.